in 2006, the Danish cartoon crisis, what was referred to as that, uh, started all over the Middle East. It was a completely made up crisis. It was a bunch of governments in the Middle East trying to rally up their people against an enemy. And it's something that worked due to the natural frustration of the people who are living under those authoritarian regimes. So uh, they, they uh, went and uh, told them that there were some cartoons that assaulted the prophet. They did not tell them what the cartoons entailed or they actually print the cartoons or whatever. And actually, the cartoons were printed in an Egyptian newspaper back in Ramadan the year before and actually had a copy of this newspaper. And the average Muslim walked around, read the newspaper, during Ramadan, shook his shoulders and left. But it became so ridiculous to me that people started boycotting butter and cheese. Uh, and it makes sense, you know, it's easy to take your frustration out in Denmark, you know. You, people have been trying to boycott Israel for years, but, you know, those cheeky Israelis never actually put made in Israel labels on their stuff, so that, that didn't really work out. And then they tried to boycott the US, and yeah, look around you, McDonald's, <laughs> live with jeans everywhere, like globalization, you can't do it. But Denmark, you know, they make cheese and Lego. We can take it out on them. And I thought this was wrong. I thought it wasn't fair. I thought the Danish people actually uh, stood by lots of the Arab and Muslims country, Muslim countries in many, many ways. And I thought it was really stupid to collectively punish, you know, an entire country. Uh, just because you disagree with 11 cartoonists and editor. So uh, at first, it was so silly, like, and it was taking such silly shapes that me and Robal Asi and Jordan, we started talking about this and discussing this. And at first, we wanted to start the uh, anti-boycott Danish products campaign. So uh, at first, it was the boycott the boycott or support Danish cows, because we decided it had to be something that silly. And we were doing support Danish cows because we thought that Danish cows were good, unlike their British counterparts who are just mad. So we need to support the Danish cows. And somehow this has turned into the buy Danish campaign. You know, go and buy Danish products. Yani. Why wouldn't you buy Danish products? Yani. Lots of uh, American blogs and European blogs used to follow me. We were like, oh my God, someone really took the initiative to do this, you know? So they started like, you know, taking the, <laughs> the avatars that we had created, some of them were silly, and they started really working on it, and then making something bigger and bigger and bigger, and just, it was something you just sit there and watch the power of the internet just take over. Uh, there are two stories that sum up the Danish cartoon crisis for me. Those are two favorite stories. Uh, number one was about the Palestinian guy, entrepreneur who lived in Gaza who actually started my, uh, my dream job, basically. I had a dream job of opening a, f a US and Israeli flag store in Gaza, right next to a gas station, then sell combos. And the guy used to do that. He used to sell US and Israeli flags. And he used to get those US and Israeli flags from an Israeli factory. And the Israelis were like, Hey, man, constant supply, uh, constant demand, fine, whatever. Just give them our flags. They're happy. They'll burn a flag somewhere or another, so just give it to them. And when the Danish thing started happening, he called the factory, and he was like, listen, I know my people. They're going to want to burn the Danish flag. So they're like, we don't have any Danish flags. We have a Swiss flag. So he's like, uh, why a Swiss flag? They're like, it looks like a Danish one. It's red. It has a white cross. It's it could work. It's so like, fine, fine, send me the Swiss flag. Then the next day, there was international news everywhere that the uh, Gaza protesters burned the Swiss flag, which was the average Swiss person must have thought this was actually kind of strange. <laughs> Someone's really mad at us and they burned our flag. What have we done? <laughs> My second favorite story was um, six months later, after this whole thing calmed down, after the crisis has been averted from the evil cartoons, uh, there was a big discussion in Egyptian parliament whether or not to take uh, money from Denmark, you know, Danish aid. And uh, people were so mad, like, should we take the money, should we take the money? And then they reached a decision. They're going to take the Danish money, but they're not going to be happy about it. Which is kind of like USAID money when you think about it. 